Learn how to paint watercolor pumpkins with easy botanical patterns. I'm going to show you the best way to get bright white doodles on watercolor, how to mix the perfect muted pumpkin colors, and a wet on wet technique that makes your pumpkins look 3D in only one layer, making this a super fast and fun project. You can find the pumpkin line drawing and recommended supplies in the video description. The best way to get bright white on top of your watercolors is to save what's underneath your watercolors. Hear me out. Have you tried white gel pens and acrylic markers on top of watercolor and been underwhelmed? How many coats does it actually take before it starts to look white? Maybe you've tried bleed proof white ink. It certainly covers better and you can paint with it, but it's so white it looks almost blue compared to your watercolor paper. That's why I love masking fluid. The best, brightest white is the white of your paper. With one coat of masking fluid, you can protect that perfect bright white while you paint on top of it. When you're done painting, you simply remove the masking fluid to reveal those gorgeous white patterns. Don't let the masking fluid intimidate you. With a few simple tools, it's easy and fun to apply. Let me show you how it's done. Grab a cheap, small brush that you can dedicate to masking fluid. Before you start, rinse your brush in a jar of soapy water and blot it dry before loading it up with masking fluid. You can paint with masking fluid on a brush just like you paint with watercolor. Painting doodles like this is a great way to practice applying masking fluid. For the leafy pumpkin, paint a long stem with the tip of your brush, then add leaves. Leaves are easy. Start on the tip of the brush, press down on the belly to create the leaf, then lift the brush back up to the tip to create the point. Rinse your brush periodically in the soapy water and blot it dry before reloading it with masking fluid. Paint more leaves in each section of this pumpkin. Don't worry if the masking fluid goes outside of the pumpkin. Actually, feel free to paint over those edges. Then grab a stylus to add some scattered dots around the leaves. If you don't have a stylus, you can use the tip of your brush. While you're making dots, add some to this small pumpkin too. Start placing dots on the top of the pumpkin and taper them off towards the bottom. To create fern leaves, you can paint a skinny stem coming up from the bottom of the pumpkin. Then, starting at the top, paint little squiggles perpendicular to the stem. Start small at the top and make the squiggles wider as you move down. Paint a fern in each section of this pumpkin. For eucalyptus, paint the stems first, then add flat, rounded leaf shapes by painting circles with the tip of your brush. Don't forget to rinse your brush off in the soapy water periodically. A ruling pen is another great way to apply masking fluid and it's much easier to clean than a brush. Use a ruling pen or the tip of your brush to create a herringbone pattern on this pumpkin. Alternate the direction of the diagonal lines in each section of the pumpkin. For an easy floral design, use your brush to paint tall grasses coming up from the bottom of the pumpkin. Then, using a ruling pen or the tip of your brush, add a cluster of dots at the top of the tallest grasses. You can also apply masking fluid with a dip pen, another easy to clean tool. When you're done, you can let the masking fluid dry on the nib and then just peel it off. Use a dip pen or the tip of your brush to make dashes all over this pumpkin. The dot, herringbone, and dash patterns are a nice contrast to the botanical patterns. It's time to paint these cuties. But first, we need to mix up just the right colors. I painted my pumpkins with a muted green, orange, of course, and a muted turquoise. For pumpkins, keep your oranges bright and mute any other colors. Let me show you a quick trick for mixing the perfect muted fall colors. To mute any color, you add the complementary color. Phthalo green is way too vibrant for a pumpkin. Add a little quinacridone rose and the result is a beautiful muted minty green. To tone down turquoise blue, you can add burnt sienna, which is an orangey earth color. You get a nice dirty turquoise. If you wanna paint some of your pumpkins pink, you can add a touch of green to make a soft vintage pink. If you wanna to tone down yellow, add a touch of purple to create a deeper golden color. I did not mute my orange because, hello, pumpkins. I created a vibrant orange by mixing new gamboge with quinacridone rose. Now you're ready to paint your pumpkins. I'm gonna show you an easy wet on wet technique to add shading to your pumpkins that will make them look 3D. First, use a lighter mix of your base color to fill in the entire pumpkin. 
aim for a middle value for the base color so that the white patterns will contrast nicely. Then make a thicker, darker mix of that same color. That means lots of pigment and very little water. Switch down to a smaller brush and use that thicker mix to paint the shadow areas of the pumpkin. If your paint is too watery, it will spread out into the paint that's already on the pumpkin. If it's a thicker mix, it won't spread as far and you'll be able to create soft shadows. Concentrate the darker paint along the lines on the pumpkin and toward the bottom of each section. On the pumpkins where you can see the top where it dips in for the stem, paint the sections behind the stem with the darker mix. You can create highlights by drying off your brush and using it to lift out some of the paint wherever you want to create a highlight. This easy method for creating shadows and highlights will give your pumpkins a 3D look. The best part is it only takes one layer, which means you're one step closer to removing the masking fluid and seeing your fun botanical pumpkins. But first, we need to add the stems. Make sure your painting is completely dry. You could paint the stems a dark brown or a green. I decided I wanted to add a little something extra, so I pulled out my gold metallic ink. I used my ruling pen to outline each stem and then filled them in. I just can't resist a little extra shimmer. Whatever you do, just keep it simple. The stems are not the focal point. With a ruling pen full of gold ink in my hand, I couldn't resist scattering some gold dots on the white paper around the pumpkins. It's finally the moment you've been waiting for, the big masking fluid reveal. Make sure your stems are dry first. Use a masking fluid eraser or your finger to rub off the masking fluid and reveal your beautiful botanical patterns. These pumpkins are so fun. Are you ready to see what else you can do with masking fluid? Grab my free guide on how to use masking fluid at the link in the description. If you're ready for more masking fluid tutorials, check out my masking fluid playlist.